Next up, we've got Sasko Stubilo. Sasko is a core developer here at Meteor Development Group. Uh, tonight, Sasko is going to give a quick update on his current project, the Meteor Guide. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sasko. Hello. Let me just plug in here. This is like the seventh time or something, so it should work the same way. Okay. Great, um, so a lot of you guys might have heard of the Meteor Guide. Uh, maybe some of you haven't. I've been promoting it anywhere I possibly can. Uh, posting on the forums, we had a blog post that was an interview about what we're trying to work on. <clears throat> There's a GitHub repository, uh, and I'll tell you guys a little bit more about how to find out more information or contribute at the end. Um, I definitely wanna highlight some of the awesome people that we've been working with on this project. Uh, Tom is uh, my partner here. He's uh, one of the authors of Discover Meteor, which is, as we mentioned, one of the best resources to get started with Meteor. And now he's helping me build the Meteor Guide. Uh, also, Evan has been helping us with the website, and Zoll is helping us uh, get organized. So, you know, I always come up here and do all the talks because uh, I happen to be here at the time, uh, but it's definitely a great collaboration between a lot of, a lot of cool people. So, uh, just to give you guys a status update on what we have since maybe last time we talked, uh, you can check out the YouTube history for you know, the introduction and whatnot. Uh, one thing we have now is a website. So we actually are done with two of the rough drafts of the articles. Um, and we're still a little bit working on the website, but we have most of the general idea down. You can go to guide.meteor.com, pretty uh, clear URL there. And uh, check out what we have to say about collections and models and also security. Uh, so we have, I believe, a pretty complete description of what you need to think about if you're worrying about security for your Meteor app. And as a consequence, you could accept, uh, you could apply this to really any JavaScript application that uses a similar architecture to Meteor. So even if you're not using specifically publications and methods, we're using REST endpoints, a lot of these kinds of ideas will apply. Uh, so definitely check out the website to see what we have already. Um, the next thing that I'm really excited to talk about is we've spent a lot of time, uh, probably about two weeks, rebuilding the to-dos app that we know and love. I think this is my fifth time rebuilding to-dos app. Uh, I think I did it in Windows, and I did it in SQL, I did it in React, uh, and now I've done it with the Meteor Guide, which is basically taking the to-dos app that we had, which was a great example for how you might build a simple app, uh, you know, with not too much, uh, you know, overhead or whatever, and apparently no security. And now we've upgraded it uh, to be completely secure, completely modular, and an app that you can safely take and extend to add whatever features you want without worrying that it's going to become totally unmanageable. So if you want to check out some of the ideas we're working on, this is our test bed for all of them. Um, and hopefully it will be a test bed for some great new Meteor features in the future. This isn't the only example app we're going to have until the end of time, uh, but it's the one that we have for this current version. So you can check that out on GitHub slash Meteor slash to do's. Um, we also have a Waffle I.O. board, unfortunately. I don't know. Uh, Maxime should tell me when he's done with that GitHub import feature, because um, I would definitely love to build some of my own features into this. But uh, you can check out our Waffle I.O. board at waffle.io slash meteor slash guide. And we have many, many columns on there because we want to feel like we're making progress by moving these things through uh, all these columns. <laughs> so as you can see, we finished two of the first drafts of our articles. We have six that are in progress, which means we have open pull requests for these articles. So actually, if you go to our GitHub repository, uh, you can come in and comment and see if there's anything that uh, doesn't seem right or is contradictory with what you've seen in the past or anything like that. Uh, the ones in the middle are the ones that we think we've applied to the to-do's example app so far. Um, so if you want to learn about what we're thinking about uh, implementing different kinds of accounts functionality into your app, you can definitely go to the to-do's example app and see what we've done there. Uh, but there might not be a draft uh, for that yet. So you can keep track of this board if you want to stay up to date on our progress. This is the one that we showed Jeff you know, when we have our meetings weekly. Um, so one of the things I wanted to dive deep into is something that I've been reposting a lot on every forum thread in the last couple of days, so I figure I may as well repost it here as well. Um, so there's been a lot of tension recently, I think, in my mind and in the, uh, you know, just the general development of Meteor and discussion in the forums about should Meteor be a flexible, uh, you know, platform with lots of different totally decoupled packages, you mix and match whatever you want, you know, Angular, Flow Router, Iron Router, whatever, or should it be an opinionated uh, single unit that you use or you don't use, and there's just one opinion, one way to do everything, Really easy to get started, but you might not be, you know, in as much of luck if you want to switch something out. So, uh, you know, this is, I think, the root of a lot of questions of the form, like, when will something be in core? Like, 
when will it be a router in core, when will it be a schema in core, will we have like security practices baked in or testing? And I think now we finally have actually a pretty good answer to this question, which is that we have now two things. One can be flexible and the other can be opinionated. So I think it makes sense that you know, it's always best practices when you're writing your code to make your code as flexible and as extensible as possible. And so when we're writing the code for the Meteor platform, the Meteor framework, all the packages that are going to make up the stuff you use to build the core of your app, we want that to be as flexible as possible so that you can use any router you want. You know, switch out the build system with Webpack, as people have been doing. Uh, use Astronomy to manage your collections. Use Iron Router to do your routing. On the other hand, if you don't want to worry about that, um, you, know, you don't have any super unique requirements for what you're doing, you can go with the totally opinionated approach. Because now we're going to have the Meteor Guide, which is going to give you, as far as I can tell, an opinion on like, every single question you could possibly ever have. Like We're going to have a linter configuration that tells you exactly where to put your quotes and like, where to put your spaces. Uh, you know, we have automatic print compilation of ES2015 with exactly the features that we think are best to use. Um, we're recommending simple schema for you to put schemas on your, on your MongoDB collections and later more cool stuff, flow router for your routing, et cetera. Um, so the idea is you can start out using the guide, you can train your developers on that, and if at some point something doesn't work for you, hopefully the core can be flexible enough to switch out any part for something that you want. This will be especially nice once we have that NPM support going in future versions of Meteor. Um, so I wanted to call out one more thing, which is uh, some of the stuff that Jeff has been talking about in his uh, talk a little bit earlier today, um, which is the benefit for you guys, people who already have Meteor apps, of actually adopting some of the things that we're working on the guide, and also a good reason for you to care about what we're writing in there. You know, because uh, you might think, you know, I have already an app, I have some of my own opinions, some of my own ideas, like, why would I even read this thing? And I think there's a lot of benefits, actually, for everyone to have a consistent platform and a consistent way of doing things. Um, first of all, it's much easier to hire and train new developers for your organization. I think that's been, uh, you know, a big concern for everyone in this kind of ever-changing JavaScript world, like, do you hire, like, a React developer? Do you hire, like, a Node.js developer, what do they need to know to be able to get started on your app? If you follow this thing in the guide and you contribute your opinions to those opinions, now you have a good base to start with. Um, the stuff that we're coming in the guide can also be a good thing for us to think about when we're playing out upgrade paths. So, for example, right now, you know, we're going to be working on Meteor 1.3, and you write your app, and then we're going to be releasing something new in 1.4. So, whatever we release in the next version, we're going to put special effort to make sure that it works with the things we recommended for the previous version. Right, so if you're using Flow Router or something, you can be pretty sure uh, that it's still going to work in Meteor 1.4, or else we'll give you a really good upgrade path. Um, you can make fewer decisions. I think it's like a pretty clear benefit. And also, if somebody's building a community package, for example, uh, you know, one of the biggest benefits of Meteor's package ecosystem is you can drop a package into your app and know that it's going to work with lots of different parts of your stack at once. Um, so basically, once we've written down the patterns that we think are recommended based on all the feedback from the community, um, people can find the gaps and fill in the things that are a little rougher than they should be with packages. And hopefully that can give people something to focus around uh, for what they need to build, right? So we're not building five different schema packages, but we're actually thinking, oh, you know, there's this particular part of testing that's not great, and I can see the gap right there because there's all this boilerplate you need to write. I'm going to fix that with my package. And then in the next version of the guide, we can recommend that. Um, and the last thing that I promised is, uh, you know, we can't do this stuff without you guys contributing. Uh, Tom and I aren't like, you know, oracles that can tell all the best things about building an app, which is, uh, you know, a question somebody had in the forums, basically. You know, the only way we're going to be able to do this is by finding out what problems you guys are facing in your daily app building experience and how you guys are solving those problems. And the only way we're going to find out is if you tell us. And uh, the best way to tell us is to go to the GitHub repository on Meteor slash guide. And the first thing you should do is read the outlines. There's a folder called Outlines with a bunch of markdown files. I check that out, submit a pull request or file an issue. You can check out the first, first drafts we've already written. Uh, there's like eight of those. So that will be a good place if you have uh, some nitpicks about the details. And eventually, um, you know, following up on my previous point, if there's places where you think things could be a lot better, because there's some things that we document that we're like, man, this is really not the best that it could be. Uh, you know, if you're a developer and you have a little bit of spare time and want to give back to the community, that'd be a great place to find a place to write your next package. So that's what we're working on, and uh, you know, see you maybe next month with a more complete version. Thanks. <laughs>